forbidden chocolate milk. They say that oil and water can't mix, but clearly they're wrong. What started out as a low coolant warning has spiraled into this. But the big question is, can we save it? This can be a somewhat common issue on three liter supercharged Audis, a failing PCV valve. Now you're probably wondering how can a bad PCV valve cause coolant in the oil? Engineering. That's how. This plastic PCV valve lives underneath the supercharger and it has coolant passages in it. Over time, the plastic can crack and let coolant get into the oil. And then you get the forbidden chocolate milk. This is not the only thing that can cause oil and coolant to mix. A bad head gasket or a failing oil cooler are also on the list. I've tested the oil cooler and I think we're good there. When it comes to the failing head gasket, I'm just gonna pray to the car gods that that's not what's wrong. When I drained the oil and saw how horrible it looked, I decided to pull the oil pan, which I'm really glad that I did. Look at how much oil coolant mixture is left after draining the engine oil. Man, it's so thick. I also pulled the oil filter to see how bad it was and clearly, it's terrible. Obviously we're gonna replace the filter and I'll go ahead and clean the oil filter housing out while I'm here. I've already replaced this PCV valve. Initially this was going to be one complete video start to finish with replacing the PCV valve, but with so much mixture, I felt like it made more sense to do two separate ones. So if you wanna see a complete DIY on doing this PCV valve, I'll definitely link that up. So we've done our sort of stage one of evaluation. In a perfect world, we would actually go through and check all the main bearings, all the rod bearings, the cam journals and everything to make sure that we didn't have any bearing damage to this engine. However, this car has 216,000 miles on it. Doing all that work is, well, a lot of work. And also really the more important thing is it's a lot of money in hardware. So what we're gonna do now is what I like to call an attempt to salvage the engine. This will consist of a series of engine oil flushes to try and get as much of this out of our engine as we can. We have some reassembly we need to do, but first things first, we gotta clean this nasty stuff at the bottom of our oil pan. I'm not even gonna clean the sealant off of this. We'll do that on the final thing. You may remember this from such repairs as 1.8 turbo sludgy Passats and A4s. We're just gonna put this pan on with a couple of bolts. It's gonna leak. We have the drip tray down on the bottom. Enough oil should hold in there to not you know, ruin the engine or anything. And a little bit of a leak is not gonna be a problem. We'll go ahead and just put the old drain plug with the old crush washer back in. We'll do this until it's time to put the final one on. No sense in wasting a crush washer. The unfortunate part is, is I'm gonna have to put the oil cooler all the way back on. I'm gonna put the old gasket back on. I do have a new one, but we'll, we'll do that only on the, the final time. It would be ideal if this oil cooler wasn't attached to the oil pan, the lower pan as well. I left the back bolt out because, well, it kind of stinks getting in and out and we're just gonna have to take it back off anyway. I'll worry about that when we put it back together. Give it a little tap of give it a little pre-gusher of oil wipe down, put our new oil filter in. I debated on not even running a filter for this first flush, but I went ahead and decided just to go ahead and do it. I've already cleaned out the housing, so we don't need to worry about that. I'm not even gonna replace the seal on this one because I don't feel like it. By the way, S4 has two seals. You're probably thinking, what's Hackzilla doing now? Keep in mind, everything we're doing right now, all this is coming back apart, so a little bit of an oil leak is not gonna really make any difference at all. Now it's time to juice this baby up with the finest of engine oil, SuperTech. No, SuperTech is not the correct engine oil. In fact, it gets the least amount of stars out of the star rating for star charts. But here's the deal. We'll go ahead and get our Poly D funnel in here while I fill this guy up. So yes, not only is this the wrong oil, it's not full synthetic. It's also not 50200 spec oil. It is oil and it's gonna be a million times better than the oil that was mixed with coolant. So it doesn't really matter that this is the wrong stuff. Temporary thing in an attempt to salvage the engine. I think we're about ready to go. Let's get the shop door open. All right, let's fire it up and see what happens. Crossing my fingers. I'm a little nervous. It runs. Sounds a little sad. A little timing chain rattle, but that's okay. So it's been about 10, 15 minutes or so. I ran it at idle, ran it off idle. Now we're gonna put the car back up, drain the oil. I'm just gonna let it drain for like 20 minutes. No rush here. And we're also gonna see what it looks like. So maybe I'll try and take a specimen sample of that oil. 
that hopefully doesn't have a whole lot of coolant mixed in it anymore. As I expected, we had a little bit of oil leaking, but that's actually, it's actually less than I thought we would have. Now that we've shut the car off, you can see it's actually leaking quite a bit more than it was before. Try and capture a sample of this oil here. It looks kind of yuck. All right, let's go ahead and pull the plug here because this will take a hundred hours to drain out if we just do it this way. Oil's nice and warm, that's good. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Nice little stream. See the smoke rising. All right, no need to just keep watching this drain. Let's move on to the next thing. Round two. Okay, that's flush too. Also, check out how much oil actually leaks when you shut the car off because all that oil now is just sitting at the pan. Get our drain plug cracked loose and I'm gonna grab another sample. That looks so much better. We're still grabbing a lot of contaminants out of the engine, but wait till you see what this looks like directly compared to that, uh, that last sample that I grabbed. Let this drain out. Ooh, that's real warm. Already making a mess. Why not just go for it? It's hot. At least the hottest oil possible sploshied everywhere. I did not replace the oil filter between flush one and flush two. Let's take the oil filter out and see what it looks like. Then we can decide to replace it, or maybe we run no filter at all. Oh, that filter's super clean still. I think we're gonna run this one for the final one. And then we'll put a new filter in when I do the final fill up. All right, round three. This will be the last of our pumpkin spice engine oil. Here's what the plan is for this one. I'm gonna fill it up with oil. Then I'm gonna let it run for about 15 minutes to get the oil up to temp. I'm gonna shut the car off. Then I'm going to add our Liquid Molly engine flush and let it run for about another 10 minutes. And then we'll see what the oil looks like when it comes out. Now after this next drain, I'm also gonna pull the pan off. We gotta reseal that, reseal the cooler, and actually put the car back together the right way. Round three. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and get our engine flush, and we'll run it another 10 minutes, see what happens. That was a good little flippy. Doing the Liquid Molly engine flush is super simple. Basically, add the whole can to your engine oil, run the car for 10 minutes at idle, and then do a complete oil change. But like with anything, make sure you follow the instructions on the bottle. All right, that was our final flush. Now, right now, we're gonna put the car up and actually finish fixing it instead of just slapping it together like a hack. Let us fracketh the drain plug. Just like we did for the other ones, let's go ahead and get our Sample, oh, look at how clean that is. Okay, while that drains, let's actually look at our progression of oil samples that I've taken. This one is what I first pulled out of the engine and never let it separate. So this was actually what I was going to send off to Blackstone. Starting on the left is a sample of clean engine oil. The next two are the ones that I initially pulled out of the engine. You can see on this one where the dirty oil has kind of risen to the top and the rest of it is the oil and coolant mixed together. Then we have after our first flush, after our second flush, and then after our final flush where we ran the actual engine flush solution. And just for fun, this is what it looks like when you just pour engine oil and engine coolant together. I'm gonna try not to make a huge mess taking this drain plug out. It's also hot, so I don't wanna... There we go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. I think we actually are gonna be good here. Uh, I'm gonna take these bolts out of oil cooler. We'll get our 10 millimeters out of the pan, all but like the easiest one to get. Taking that cooler off is gonna suck. Final cooler bolt off. Come on, come on. We got a lot of drippage happening. <laughs> oh, there we go. There it is. Well, I guess that was about ready to come off. And it did. Let's get our final bolts out of this pan. Get this pan out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil filter off now too. That way we can inspect the filter and what was left in the pan on the bench. You can see there's still a bit of oil left in our pan. I'm going to drain it into a container we can actually take a better look at. Some crud in it, but overall, this compared to what we got out of it, pretty good. I'm, I'm not mad about that. Looking at our filter, so some carbon deposits. That should be not surprising. The good things are not really any metal, not really any more oil coolant mix that's that's obvious. Carbon buildup I'm not worried about. So all in all, I'm feeling pretty good about that.
With everything looking pretty good, let's get the oil pan cleaned out. Any remnant yuck that may be left in there. And we also have to prep the pan to reseal it. So all that old nasty sealant that was on from before, we need to remove that. I like the whiz wheel tool here with the little green fingery guy. That won't really take any metal off. It'll just get rid of any rogue paint or any old sealant. With the pan clean and dry, I'm gonna lay down a bead of sealant around the entire edge. This is the point in time where often people put way too much sealant on these pans. Pans, you don't need a ton in order to get the pan properly sealed. Remember when you torque the pan down, the sealant's gonna squash out. If you put too much on, you're gonna have floppity sealant hanging in your pan. I'm also 100% sure this pan has been off before. Look at these gouges in the aluminum here. They're pretty significant. Now, our sealant will account for that, but it goes to show you wanna be careful when you're taking an oil pan off. Before we put the pan up, we'll just wipe down this mating surface one more time. Make sure there's not really any oil on it or anything. Clean it with brake parts cleaner if you'd like. I like, that's a good choice. Next we'll get our pan, make sure it's oriented right, pull these lines out of the way a little bit. Wanna make sure you don't drag the pan. Usually just get one started. Then I like to run them all in, then we'll come back and tighten them. Next we're gonna get our cooler on. I do have a new gasket for these. If makeup tutorials have taught us anything, it's put your hand behind what you're trying to show. You'll be able to see it. The ones for the oil cooler have the washer on it, I also put a little bit of putty in there to hold, hold the guy, see look, you can hold it and then he doesn't come off and then as soon as I put it up there, it'll come off. Sadness. I got it started pretty easy. I wonder if it's because I'm, ah! I thought I was gonna dodge that. I can't dodge a wrench or a flashlight. Putting the final touches down here, we'll plug in our oil sensor. We'll get our T30s in for this line that runs across the front bottom. It's a little bent up. A little sad right up there. That could have been from me. Who knows? We get our sway bar in next. I was gonna say that's everything, but I was wrong. We still gotta put this drain plug guy back on. Some might say this is an important piece of our puzzle. I'm not gonna put the belly pan on just yet. I wanna leave it off so that we can put some miles on it, make sure we don't have any oil leaks. Let's go ahead and replace this filter unit here. Uh, while I'm tightening this down, it's worth mentioning the majority of this stuff actually came from our man Polly D over at Shop Dap. Something to keep in mind about stuff like this, even if you're looking for like dealer only type stuff, Paul can get that for you. So if you're struggling to find that one rando bolt or something like that, better call Paul. Time to fill it up with oil. Unlike last time where we used the cheapest oil, this time we're using the right deal. By the way, this is an oil change sticker right on the top of the bottle. They thought of everything. We're also gonna do some MOS2 friction modifier. That's a new PCV valve and three engine oil flushes in the hopes that we actually got all that oil and coolant mixture out of our engine and that our engine is good and it's happy. Now, I have questions just like I know you guys have the same questions. Was this worth running all that oil through just to Maybe, maybe save the engine, maybe not. Should we have taken the engine down and really done a thorough inspection? Would that have been the right thing to do? Well, that would have been the most thorough thing to do, but we're looking at an Audi S4 with 220,000 miles on it and spending several hundred dollars in parts if we had to put it back together, I don't know that that's worth it. And a lot of the work that we did, we would have had to do anyway, minus the flushing of the oil. So the truth is, the flat out truth is, I don't know. And frankly, nobody knows. The only thing we can do now is keep an eye on it. Maybe in a few thousand miles, I'll send an oil sample over to Blackstone and have them evaluate the oil, see if they can glean anything from that data inside the oil, that, like the oil that's in it now. When I initially started out on this adventure, I pulled the sample of oil because I was gonna send it to Blackstone and then it came out that delicious chocolatey milk. So I didn't feel like there was a reason to send that over just for them to tell us I'm, well, nothing we can do now but to throw some miles on it. So with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time. Where's the start button? Just a little noise from the timing chain, it's fine.